check them out. They have mangoes, super cheap for sale, and just jackfruit and just everything. So this is a place you want to definitely put on your list. Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees. Here I am in front of a fruit tree called the Lemon Zest Mango Tree. And here, this tree over here is a sweet tart. And there's so many different mangoes that people haven't heard of. As a matter of fact, there's so many different fruits that people haven't heard of. And one of those fruits is lychee. And there's so many farms I travel all over the world that have different exotic fruits. But right here where I live in Palm Beach County, there's a bunch of farms that have all these exotic fruits. And today we're going to be visiting a lychee farm that has mangoes and other fruit available, but the main thing they have is lychee. And this is a 30-acre farm that's right near my house, and I didn't even know it was here until recently. And I'm so glad I got there and checked it out. They have so much wonderful things going on there. It's just amazing that it's so close to where I live. And I'm so excited to meet Ravi, the owner, and hear all about his farm because a 30-acre tropical fruit farm right near my house growing lychee and mangoes and all these different things. Not only will I get to learn about it, so will, so will you. So here's Ravi and let's go and explore this farm. All right, everybody, here we are. This is Ravi at Naja Gardens. And uh, Ravi, uh, tell us a little about the land there. How many acres do you have? Oh, we have about uh, a total of 30 acres. Uh, about 25 are tied to lychee orchard and mango trees. And then about five acres where we have a small uh, uh, nursery. So we'll kind of quickly look at uh, both those areas. All right, great. So uh, how long have you been here? I've been here uh, seven years. So seven years, uh, the first two years were a struggle. I'd, uh, you know, the very first year I passed through Irma, the storm, and that took me about six months to clean up the place. So that was the first experience with, um, you know, hurricanes over here for me. Huh. Um, and since then, we've had a few, but nothing like the Irma storm. So. Sure. And when you moved here, was it bare land or was there already an existing farm? This was an existing farm. It used to be owned by Rose Kin, who used to, the name was Canary Groves. Uh, she had a lychee orchard. And we just uh, decided that we'll maintain the lychee orchard along with uh, planting a lot more new plants. So we've planted uh, about 50 varieties of mangoes. Because I just enjoy, you know, the, as growing up, I was brought up around mangoes. So I decided let's just put, you know, different varieties. Great. Uh, love we have a lot of different supporters. We have uh, jackfruits. Um, so we'll go around. We'll That's look at exciting. each one of those items. That's very exciting. Okay. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm happy to meet you and uh, give us a chance to, to now, show Now, do you sell uh, wholesale and retail? Yeah, when we on lychee, we do wholesale. Uh, we, if we get a good crop, then we'll sell about 50% wholesale and 50% retail. Uh, we'd prefer to go retail, uh, you know, just because, you know, we, we can maintain or recover some of our costs. Um, uh, wholesale is uh, something we do if you have a decent crop on lychee, which hasn't been that good in the last couple of years. Last three years, actually. Yeah. So. Well, we're going to take a look at your lychee trees, and then you can tell okay. us a little about or what's going on with those. And also, I'd love to see your mango trees and everything else. So we're going to have Absolutely. a great time, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And I'm going to put the address below, everybody, the website and the address. Do you have a website or are you just on Facebook? Oh, we have both uh, web Facebook, we have Instagram, uh, right. and then we also have a website uh, um, um, that we, most of our uh, advertising is done through social media. Sure. All uh, right. Mostly through Facebook. Um, How many varieties of lychees do you have? We grow three different types of lychee. Um, the, the primary one is Mauritius lychee, which is the most commonly grown in Florida. Uh, we also grow sweetheart. Uh, maybe we have about uh, maybe 50 trees of sweetheart. Um, and then Brewster is uh, grown every every fourth row that we have is a Brewster here. Uh, but Brewster, like sweetheart, are unpredictable. You know, the growth, uh, you get fruit once every three years. Uh, sure. Mauritius, chances are you'll get some fruit every year. But, uh, but usually all... 
Lychees are every other year is where the crop comes in. Now, when you do sell lychee retail, uh, how much do you sell for a pound? It depends. Uh, like this year, we sold anywhere from six dollars to eight dollars a pound for Mauritius, and then uh, for Sweetheart, it was anywhere from eight dollars to twelve dollars a pound. So it depends on the crop size. Sure. Uh, but on an average, I think uh, what we have seen in the past in the six years that I've been doing lychees, uh, it's been about five dollars a pound okay. uh, retail. Uh, wholesale obviously is a lot less than that. Uh, um, so we we also grow some bananas here. These are Namwa bananas. Namwa, dwarf uh, Namwa? Dwarf, uh, they're not dwarf. Uh, okay. The newer ones that we put in are ice cream bananas here. Okay. Um, they're, they're mostly Namwa, like medium sized ones. Um, and we did, did take a big hit on uh, during the winter. Um, did the cold weather caused a lot of the plants to die back. So now with all the rains we're getting, they're starting to come back again. And you have irrigation on the bananas? Yeah, all, the whole 25 acres is irrigated. We have uh, drip irrigation. Uh, yeah, how many one, wells do you have on the land? Uh, we have uh, three wells, yeah. Three wells and one main one that actually supplies almost 15 acres. Do you know how uh, deep the wells are? Good question. I don't know. Uh, okay. That's something that I need to know. Were they here when you started or you put them in? Uh, they were already here when when we started, so so I'm not um, sure how deep they are. But we have never never really had a problem with not getting water, you know. So I'm assuming they're deep enough to. Um, I don't know the quality of the water. You know, some people say sure uh, we're getting infiltrated by salt in this area. Um, I'm not sure it hasn't affected the plants yet. So this is um, 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 this is Neelam, uh, Neelam mango. Okay. Yeah, always stays green. Um, and then this is um, this one is um, um, what do you call that? Um, the the famous favorite Indian mango. Kerry. Kerry. Yeah. Kerry. Kerry. Both these are Kerries. So do you trim these trees at all? We trim them. They, all these were planted uh, about five to six years ago. Uh, these might be three years ago, uh, and we want to maintain a 10 to 12 feet uh, uh, margin on those. Oh, you do great on your trimming. Great job yeah, there. Yeah. Very so, good. And then we have we also planted some gunabana. These are some gunabana oh, wow. plants. Unfortunately, gunabana doesn't like uh, you know temperatures below 40 degrees, uh, and we in Lakshachi get temperatures close to 35, 40. So do they grow a little here, just not very productive, or do they not uh, grow at all? They're not very productive for me. You know, I've heard people in this area have had good production, uh, but I haven't had much luck. In fact, uh, we planted about 50 trees. Uh, we lost about 20 to 30 so far. You know, here. Uh, so every year it seems like um, the the cold is um, hurting them. Now your lychee trees aren't, tr uh, at least over here, they're not tremendously abundant, uh, 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 tremendously big. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you trim your lychee trees? Yeah, I'll show you what happened here. What happened is, uh, I mean, uh, you brought that up, uh, you know, earlier about uh, the lychee mite. Uh, basically, about four years ago, we had our first traces of mite on our farm. And so we called the state basically to say, hey, let's see what it is. You know, we, we knew what what it was, but it was just to verify. We called the state. The state came in and uh, basically, you know, did some testing and concluded there was the Arenos mite. And then once they got that, they they basically decided to quarantine my farm wow. uh, and said, hey, you can't sell any fruit here. Uh, but you could sell it out of state. Uh, and then subsequently, after a couple of years, they decided they have a chemical that you could treat it and then sell it locally also. So one of the um, requirements would, for them was if you see even one trace of a little, uh, um, you know, uh, my, a trace of a mite, uh, which is like a little gall on the leaf, yeah. they decided, hey, you should cut the whole tree and then plus four others, you know, which I think is a wrong strategy if you look at it from a big, big scale really what we should have been doing is to trim the area spray it and then and then watch it you know rather than completely chop off the whole tree so how have your trees been affected like since then because they look uh, good. they look fine but we have have we still have the infection so what the treatment that they have proposed is not effective 100 percent effective uh, so i was involved with the original plan of what type of uh, you know treatments they were using to to 
to mitigate this mite, uh, they started with some really heavy duty chemicals and then they decided, hey, that's not working very well. Um, and they, they finally they concluded that they should go with microthol sulfur. So microthol sulfur is what they're recommending right now. And once you see a mite uh, on your tree, once you trim them, you're supposed to kind of treat it every 10, 15 days and it's starting to get very expensive. Um, yeah. and, and then you're not completely curing the disease, you know, I mean, sure. taking care of the mice, still coming back. So these are some of our sugar apples that we planted. Uh, sugar apple is something that uh, we want to focus on in going forward. Uh, but the problem with sugar apple is, is just the amount of uh, maintenance it takes, the care is just tremendously high. You always have to be on top of them. So how was your... your your, the lychee crop this year. How was it affected? I mean, was it much less, half less? Yeah, yeah. Basically, our lychee was, uh, I would say, we had about one-fourth of what we would normally see this year. Uh, wow. So normally we would uh, uh, we would have about forty to 45,000 pounds a year. Uh, this year it was you know, maybe 10 to 12,000 pounds. But because of the higher price level, we were able to maintain a little bit of revenue from that. So what's your plan going forward? I mean, are you going to continue with the leaches or are you Yeah, gonna... definitely. Because it, it, that's the number one food that most people want. I mean, when I see uh, one of the things that I experience here is meeting people. I mean, I meet all types, different people from different communities. And I learn from them. I mean, what they want. And I see lychee is one of the most uh, desired fruit. Um, uh, the second most desired food is uh, sugar apple. Uh, mangoes, of course, you know, is always a universal uh, fruit. Everybody likes mangoes, but lychee and uh, sugar apple are very, very unique. Sure. Um, we also grow some jujubes. Oh wow! So these are jujube plants. Too. Are jujube these the plants. tallest Thai ones? Uh, the one is the, the the big large Thai ones. Yeah. Okay. And the, uh, this one is a smaller one, but it's probably the tastiest that I have on the property. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I'm not really sure what what type it is, but it's because something not that, all will grow here. The ones that grow in California won't grow here. Um, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, what types they are that are yeah. in California, but you're right. I mean, most of these are locally bought. Um, yeah, where do you buy most of your trees, your newer trees that you put in? Are they for nurseries or do you go to one place? Uh, um, I generally, for mangoes, I go to Zill. Okay. Um, and then uh, uh, also sometimes uh, we'll order it from Excalibur. Um, and sometimes from uh, Pine Island. You know. Okay, so yeah. So this is my uh, Indian, um, uh, somebody gave me a plant here. Um, this is called the Indian uh, um, um, gooseberry. Okay. It's a, it's a round uh, gooseberry. They use it for uh, pickling. So they, it's a seedling. So my guess is it may take another couple more years. This is about three years old. Uh, made maybe another couple, but it's a very, you know, a lot of people want the fruit. And it's all on water here too, irrigation, yeah? Irrig everything is irrigated. We have a little pond that uh, it's utilized primarily for uh, for the, um, um, you know, frost protection. So, uh -huh. and then we have a long gun tree here. We don't have a lot of long gun trees. We have maybe 30 long gun trees. Um, and unfortunately, they're like lychee. They don't produce every year. But with longan, you know, they can they can artificially stimulate uh, flowering by using potassium chlorate. Right? I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, but there's uh, no mite with the longan, right? Uh, yeah, which is which is strange because the the lychee, uh, the longan is the same family as the lychee, uh, but yet the mite doesn't impact uh, longan at all. That at least from what I've seen. Um, but you could create, uh, you can generate flowers by putting the potassium chlorate. Um, and then that's what they're doing in Homestead now. And you know, every month they're generating longan because of this potassium chlorate treatment. So these are some guavas that we have, uh, different types, but uh, we've, we don't really bag them in order to prevent it from getting these uh, worms, uh, but we just let them go. And you know, so, uh, there are about six different varieties. Some of them were bought from Excalibur. Some were bought uh, from Pine Island. Okay. 
So I want to show you my other lychee uh, orchard here, which is which is the one uh, which needs which is going to get trimmed in the next uh, uh, week or so. We were getting a big a company comes in with a big machine, and they're just going to trim the sides and the tops. Off. Wow! When you were younger, did you ever think you'd have a farm? <laughs> no, no, not to not to this size. You know, absolutely not. This is overwhelming for me. You know, at times I wonder, is it really worth it? But you know, but but to me, I enjoy every bit of it. You know, I mean, farming is definitely not an easy uh, thing to do uh, because you you go through so many cycles. You know, when you're you're getting fruit, when you don't get fruit. Um, so you, it's like you know, but you have to you know just kind of live with it and not worry about it. Uh, I like this job better than my previous job <laughs> yeah. because what well, was your previous job? I was I was a nuclear engineer, uh, but you uh, know I worked for thirty years in the nuclear power industry. Wow. Such uh, a different business now. Such a different business. Uh, I can utilize some of the techniques of you know uh, planning and uh, making sure you're the strategizing and all that. Um, so, so every fourth row here is a uh, is a, um, a Brewster lychee. Oh wow, those uh, are big trees. Yeah, it's, the Brewster is more like a uniform, uh, um, and unfortunately, you'll see a lot of um, branches around here because we just finished a harvest. Um, so you can, as you can see here, it's it's the trees have grown pretty big. So we're we're actually going to trim them very soon. How old are these trees? Uh, they were planted in um, around 2000, um, so, uh, so about 23 years old. Well, on all they've your been trimmed many, many times. So on all your trees here, sure, uh, do, you, go do you use any uh, uh, spraying the trees at all? Or, uh, yeah, uh, on the all only the trees? only spray we use is um, you know because of the mite, we use the sulfur right now. Um, and we don't spray any other uh, chemicals for the the uh, Sri Lankan weevil. You know, we've kind of given up on that one because that's all over the place. And we will see, you'll see some of the leaves being eaten, but since the trees are so big, we're not too worried about uh, a, a small effect on some leaves being eaten. Now, if it's a smaller, younger tree, you have to be a little more careful with that. Um, so we we also grow turmeric, like you were talking to Bobby the other, you know, just a few minutes back. Uh, we grow uh, mango ginger, and we also grow regular turmeric, the yellow turmeric. Oh, wow. So these were all mango ginger that we took out, but we didn't plant. Uh, so they're now propping up and growing by themselves here. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what we were doing. We were putting all of them in these rows here. Uh, these were these are bananas we just planted. They're ice cream bananas. Now, uh, what's the difference between an ice cream banana and a blue java banana? Do you know? I think they're same. I, think I they're hear some people same. say yeah. they're the same, yeah. and some people say they're yeah. Different. I think they're pretty. From from what I've seen or read, uh, um, they're the same variety. Yeah. And then the, uh, we also planted a bunch of mangoes when I came in. This is one thing I learned about mangoes is when I first came in, I said, "Oh my God, I got to plant all these mangoes," you know. So I just planted. I bought 50, 60 different varieties and just planted them. This is ugly berry, uh, and you can see there's one fallen down there. Uh, and then we, this is Pickering. Pickering does fairly decent here. Um, uh, so as I as I learned about mangoes, I found out one thing is uh, uh, mangoes are um, uh, as you go uh, west of the ocean. Uh, you get a problem with this black spots on the mangoes and what we found out is uh, it's the air basically it's mm -hmm. causing that so as you go closer to the ocean the mangoes are a lot cleaner yeah um, and there's not much you could do and i don't like to spray copper sulfate all the time um, so we've decided hey we're only going to put mangoes that do, do well in lock that's lodging. that's the answer yes. to find out which ones grow well in land and then focus and those on the those. Ones and there are some good ones that uh, do well absolutely. in lock absolutely which this, this is a diamond mango diamond yeah. i just tasted that yesterday for the yeah. first time actually is it pretty good uh it was okay not not, not, not your best one. not as good as others but it was okay um, this but one is I, Mahachanak. I don't know all the names. This is one thing I've, I've lost is when I planted them, the tags were there, the tags disappeared. 
Now it's like a you know an elimination process. Oh, now. Just okay. Look at the we, mango to find out what what it is. Maybe you'll see some that I don't know the sure. names. Maybe we you can, can look. But you, you, it's important that you figure it out and you and you label them. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Because when we try to sell the mango, people ask, "Hey, what type of mango it is?" And then a lot of times. Uh, it's easier to market something if you knew. Sure, the name. yeah. Uh, so you got to figure that one out. And then this one is rosy gold. Rosy uh, gold. Got okay. a lot of fruit on it. But again, you know, you'll see all those marks that you're seeing on the mangoes. Yeah. That's something that there's not much you can do in Lakshachi. Yeah, the uh, best way to learn what grows good out here is to speak to other people that are growing mangoes. Absolutely. And, and uh, Malika, I think, does well here. Uh, I've seen Kesar does well here. Where's your Kesar? This is all Kesar Beautiful. here. Beautiful. What yeah, a great You can mango. see uh, last year we got nothing on it. And this year it's got quite a bit of fruit on it. And wow. uh, they're generally cleaner than the other ones. Um, and I like the taste of it. I like the look of it. Uh, it's got that nice little, you know, hue on the top. Um, this, I believe, is an Alfonso. Um, okay. Um, That's for out here. It's a yeah, it, they don't come good at all. Uh, I think there are two Alfonso that I planted here. And uh, both of them, you know, they're just... The, for whatever reason, Alfonso is not the best one to plant in this area. No, and not in any South Florida, it's yeah. not, not just this and area. And this is Philippine at the back here. Philippine, um, okay. Philippine does okay, I think, not too bad. Um, and then we got um, right at the back, I think is way in the back is orange. Uh, I think that's not orange, uh, lemon zest, I think. And lemon then, zest. Yeah. So that does not too bad here also. Okay, that has a lot of problems for a lot of people. A lemon zest? Black spot, yeah. It could, I don't know, maybe it's a location where it is. It's hidden from all the, you know, old, exposed area. Maybe. So you sell uh, your mangoes here retail? I mean, yeah, retail. Yeah, yeah, we sell, uh, you know, our lychee was our main focus, you know, but once we decided, uh, you know, we could, got a lot of mangoes this year, so we're selling them. Yeah, how much um, do you sell those for a pound? You know, we, we got so many mangoes this year, and the, I think normally two one dollar to two dollars a pound. Really? Okay. Yeah, pretty pretty low, you know. Yeah, uh, very low from. Yeah, very low. And, and even with that, uh, the demand is uh, really not that high. Well, it will be so after mangoes. this video. <laughs> so you have a lot left. A lot left. A lot yes, of mangoes yes, here. Lot of mangoes. This is Nacho, my guy. He's been with me Hello, for Nacho. four years. Yeah. And uh, he's uh, pretty much my brainchild, you know. So he takes care of all all of the plants for me, and he lives on the property. So oh. since I'm gone, quite what a country are you from? Really? What country? Mexico. Mexico. Okay. Nacho. Yeah. Nacho's taking care of. Nacho all takes of care of all of that. Yeah, he's the man. <laughs> <laughs> so and then we do we do we do uh, we grow a lot of curry leaf, by the way. A lot of what? Curry leaf. Oh, curry leaf. Yeah. Okay. So we, you know, people buy curry leaf. So, uh, and it grows well here in this area. And then this is my little uh, vegetable garden that we do just for fun. You know, we, uh, we we were doing quite a bit. We were expanding, and then realized uh, the cost to maintain is just too much. Yeah. Uh, so we decided, you know, we'll just put a few crops. Uh, primarily, if you get excess, then we'll sell it. You know, that's gongora. Gongora is a. Uh, a leaf that we eat, uh, they make a chutney out of it. It's it's um, it's called sorel, basically in, in Jamaican. Yeah, or sorel or roselle, you know. So we're growing some of that. We grow some loofahs here. Um, Any on here? Yeah, in this uh, you can see some loofahs are hanging over there. But uh, loofah is a summer crop, so it does well. Um, is there anything that you want to start growing that you haven't yet? Um, sugar apple is my main uh, crop. The new one? Yeah, that's the, the new one. And I'll show you what we're doing. We have, you know, we'll go to the other nursery here. What about other anonas? Have you done any of those? I have done, um, you know, I can don't know the name. I have a few of them plants. Custard apples at all? Custard apples, uh, but they haven't fruited for me much. Um, if there's somebody that you know yeah, that I, has been successful in sugar apple, custard apple, I'd love to chat with them and, and get some information. Absolutely. Uh, again, more lychee trees. Uh, I'll show you some other. So every place where we lost a lychee tree, I'm not replanting a lychee tree. Uh, you know, part of it is the, the mite issue, you know, and part of it is uh, just the maintenance of it. So I wanted you know, put some other plants. So we planted, we're planting more sapodillas, 
and then we're planting some mangoes. So this is a this is a malika mango. Um, primarily, we use it green. You know, a lot of people like to make pickle out of it because of its uh, very extremely low fiber. Um, and then this one is uh, Michelle something, you know, what is the Karen name? Michelle. Karen Michelle, yeah. I just bought so, this tree. Yeah, it, it does I well in this area. It, I mean, it tastes delicious. I just had. Yeah, you can see the mango is fairly decent. Uh, it doesn't have too many spots on it, you know, fairly wow. decent. Uh, Very nice. Um, so we're getting some fruits on it. This That's is about good. three years old, I think. I think Gary is the one told when I was up at his little uh, nursery, he told me, hey, Karen Michelle does well in Loxachi. So I planted one of those. Now we have about uh, six different varieties of sapodilla. Um, so our sapodilla start growing around uh, January and then they go all the way till July. What about avocados? Do you have avocados? We have some avocados, not a lot. You know, the, and uh, we've lost a few trees from the canker. Um, no. so canker or whatever that, you know, just kind of uh, yeah, the they whole have section the, dies back. Yeah, it goes to the roots. Right. So these these are uh, Alana Sapota. Okay. Uh, which is my favorite. Um, so right now there's no fruit on it. I think we harvested quite a bit lately. And you try to um, keep all these trees cut back, right? We try to keep them all cut back, yeah. The mangoes especially. So this is a mango tree that uh, one of my friends grafted and gave me. This So it's grafted on a carry tree. Uh, it's a pedarasum. You know, it's an Indian mango. What's it called? It's called Pedda Rasam. Pedda Rasam, uh, yeah. okay. So the up on the top, the top is all Pedda Rasam. Um, um, it's an Indian sour mango. And then the bottom, uh, he grabbed her on a carry mango. So we just uh -huh. left, left them, you know, let them grow. So they're doing okay. Uh, this is uh, this is orange sherbet. Um, you know, I, I like the fruit. I, anytime, anything that has a citrus, I love those fruits. Um, yeah, that's the one. Just, just produce okay, and that's Namdak Mai there. That one, yeah, Namdak that Mai. One, yeah. Okay. So, so, is there any anything? What other unique Indian varieties do you have? Uh, let's go on the main road there. Uh, the only other one is um, Alfonso. Obviously, we have, and then we have some. Um, Kerry is not an Indian variety, but a lot of Indians now prefer sure. Kerry. Uh, because you have Bombay? We have Bombay, yeah. Uh, we have Bombay. This is uh, Tommy Atkins. Show us your Bombay. Okay. And, and this is Val Kerry. There are a couple of Val Kerrys in there. Wow, um, so many beautiful trees. Yeah. How far apart did you plant your tr mango trees? Um, I think they're 20 feet, 20 feet or, uh, in some cases, you know, because I wanted to kind of keep them low. So, yes, uh, no, you're doing a great job. And yeah, so these are, I don't know what this mango is. If you can guess it, then you know, that'll be good. Uh, I lost, I, I do have the, the, you know, the original bill of sale from Zill. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to do that elimination, you know, because I know which ones I planted the very you first gotta year. You got to taste it also to tell. Sometimes. Yeah, I, you know, after a while, to me, a lot yeah. of mangoes are similar, you know. And yeah. You have to be an expert like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Alex. Alex, yeah. Yeah. This I know is Venus. Okay. A mango. Uh, this is Bombay. Okay. Delicious. And a lot of now Bombay have been splitting for me because of the rains or you know maybe too much water. Um, the big tree, it grows big. Yeah, it grows big, so I have to keep it controlled a little bit. And this is Kerry. Um, this, Kerry. Yeah, this is both these are pickerings on the left side here. And that's Valencia's. Valencia grows very tall also. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We need to watch. Um, there's others inside, you know, that I planted. I just, I, I lost tags on them, you know, which I'd like to uh, find out and soon, you know, eventually there's a Himsagar over there. Oh, the really? Back. Okay. Yeah. So. That's um, nice. So do you uh, have any issues with raccoons or squirrels? Absolutely. Raccoons uh, used to be a pest for us for leeches. Uh, but then we used to get so much leeching, we just gave up on it. You know? Yeah. So we just said, Let it, you know, they're going to eat about ten percent of our fruit. Uh, lately, we have had issues with squirrels uh, eating my jackfruits. So I'll show you my jackfruit trees up okay. in the far. Um, we lost, uh, I would say, about fifty jackfruits this year. Wow. From squirrels eating them. 
And I always like to have people come and see the trees because when that trees are going to grow up, I like the way uh, I could tell you're very successful at keeping these trees pruned. So good job there. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean it takes a lot, lot of work, you know, to to keep it. The leeches are, you know, they just keep growing. They flush about five times a year, so they grow fast at least once they're mature. And the heat doesn't help. It'd be so much no. easier to do it if it was cool out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. heat doesn't help much at all, and, and especially lately this year, I think the heat is just uh, unbearable. Well, I don't know how often you mow your lawn, but this this looks excellent. Uh, we job. maintain Good it job. once a week. You know, once a week uh, we try to keep it. So this is this is a dwarf avocado. Uh, dwarf avocado. Yeah, when it doesn't grow very big. I mean, the last it's about four year old plant, so I don't know. Okay, if you can yeah, tell it looks like uh, I'm going to get out here and look at it. It looks like a a haul from just looking at it, but it's not because when it is in season. It'll still grow bigger, I think. You know, so. When it is in season. Uh, I think uh, they'll come around August, September time frame. August, September. Yeah. Okay. So they're not, uh, I don't think they're an early variety. Oh, they, uh, they could be day avocado. Yeah, that's one I think I might have purchased, you know. Yeah, uh, it looks like it might be a day. So day is uh, usually a dwarf tree. Oh, uh, smaller on the smaller, smaller side and that's the season. Okay. And you can see that avocado, it, uh, uh, it grew well and uh, we, that one was a Haas actually, the Florida Haas. Uh -huh. And it just died back and then it's coming back and then so I'm, I'm, I don't know if it'll make it or not. And this one's did the same thing. Well, they have that weevil disease where they yeah, get yeah, into the right. root. And this, once it comes in, there's not much you can do. Well, right? you need to remove the tree so it doesn't affect the other trees. Okay, maybe this one I should take it out. You know, if uh, it's confirmed that you have it, definitely. I'm pretty get rid sure of it. because it's the the, uh, it looks, the dieback was very similar to it what looks I've seen like on it. the videos. So you need yeah. to get rid of them so these other trees aren't affected. Eventually, it'll just spread. You're saying exactly. It spreads okay. to the roots. Okay, so it's yeah, good to know, yeah, because uh, we were thinking since it's coming back up again, with our, let's just leave it like that. So, um, and then the sapodillas uh, we have is uh, you know Morena, Hasia, Alano, um, or some um, ox. Uh, but we have since we have about uh, five six varieties, you know, we're able to get the crop spread out over from January to July. That's wonderful. So. So, go take a look at the other side of the uh, farm. Yeah, I'll see your jackfruit. <laughs> jackfruit, yeah. You have any white sapote here? No, I don't. I should put some of those. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. yeah and I should. Uh, I've seen uh, people talk about it. Uh, that's one fruit I don't have right now. Oh, yeah. you've tasted it, yeah? I've not tasted wow. it either. Wow. Uh, we have black sapote. Black I don't sapote, have uh, okay. white sapote. So these are um, these two plants are black supported here at the back. You can uh, that's one there. Yeah, they're big. Yeah. <laughs> and this one is big, and then there's a couple on the other side, back side. There's a jackfruit right here. Yeah. Let's talk to my daughter real quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a cashew fruit. See the cashews there, and the seeds in there. The cashews is actually a liquid. And when they open this up, they need to wear gloves because it's kind of toxic. And then they get this, this seed, but the fruit is also edible. Now, I've always found it kind of tart, but tart and dry, <laughs> but it is edible and some people love it. Not too many, few of each. Yeah, three, three of each in case sir. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's that. And uh, we're going to go check out uh, his jackfruit grove. What he's got going on there. This is uh, wonderful. Here's their phone number. Are both of those numbers good? Yeah. Yeah. Good work with them. I'm going to put this below the video, but here's their phone number, the name of their garden. Now, what does Naja mean? Uh, is that just the name of someone? Yeah. It's actually a farm that my uh, wife's. Uh, family owned back in India. Okay. So so we decided uh, we'll just use the same name and uh, continue that legacy basically. Yes. Great. Wow, this, look at this that. This is the jackfruit we just got. Um, Do you know what varieties of jackfruit you have? For I think the, the ones, I think they're either NS1 or my one. You know? Wow. Yeah. Look at that. You can and smell, smell that one, right? Oh, this one's wow. about what, 48 pounds? 48, yeah. yeah. 
The wow. largest I picked at the farm is 82 pounds. 82 pounds, wow. We need two people to carry that one. I think this year, we uh, the highest we picked is uh, 54 pounds. Yeah. 54, wow. And all these different mangoes. Yeah, this well, is the elephant mango. The elephant mango. Yeah, elephant call it the elephant mango. <laughs> yeah. They call it, wow. it's a Vietnamese mango. It's called elephant How mango. How do they taste? Like uh, you know, they've got very little fiber. I think a lot of them will peel the skin off and then they use it to dip it in a I, I would sauce. like, if I can leave with one of those, I could You can take whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, the absolutely. elephant mango, so at this point it's ripening. It's not very sweet. So a lot of people eat them when they're still really green. So it's pretty much like a... What, Nam Dak Mai or something? Hey, you know, it's got a, it's got, I mean, I like it because it's got zero fiber on it, actually. Yeah, I mean, but I've never eaten it uh, sweet. You know, it's it's What's it's the biggest sweet. mango you have? Do you have cabeza? Uh, no, we have a keet, keet mango. Oh, keet, a big, okay. We measured a keet mango, what did we measure, like? I, don't know I just got a mango that was uh, six pounds. Oh my God! Uh, uh, six cabeza, uh, cabeza. Oh, no, we're not even from Caribbean plant <laughs> produce. Uh, oh my God! Uh, yeah. th this is your dad's uh, farm here. So yeah. growing up, I mean, I know he said he never thought he'd have a farm. What did you think when he came home and told you, "I'm buying a farm"? I think it somehow made it made sense. Like I think just knowing my parents, or were always very. Um, like connected to nature and always loved plants and we they had actually been coming here before so we knew the place and the farm um, somehow it wasn't as surprising as they think it would be but I think it was an exciting moment but sure yeah. a lot of uh, people I speak to I ask them if their kids are growing also in terms of fruit and they're like oh no they're doing other things so you kind of stuck with the family business here yeah I love it here um, yeah, I think it's what what the future looks like. Who knows, right? But like, I think it's really um, exciting. Well, you don't sell trees here; you just sell the fruit, right? We sell trees also. Oh, you do. We will show you the nursery. Okay. We have. Yeah. All right. Uh oh, everybody. But mostly, we're focused on uh, yeah. you know the product to sell. We're just starting our nursery. We'll wow. show you what we're doing over there. Very promising uh, place here. Yeah. I mean, what's your hours? You're open all week. Uh, we're not open uh, all week. Uh, we're open, uh, well, during lychee season, we were open all week. Okay. Uh, but during uh, non-lychee season, we're open on the weekends. Okay, so yeah. people want to come buy mangoes, come on the weekends. Yeah, but no, I think we've, we are open on weekdays still till we, the mango season is over, you know. So, but it's usually 10 to 1. Sure, you know, okay. And, and so you should just call first. Yeah, and Mondays and Tuesdays is our shipping days. So those two days we don't open. So do you ship mangoes and We don't ship mangoes, but we ship a lot of herbs, you know, a lot of mango leaf, uh, banana leaf. Well, uh, what do you mean mango leaf? The leaf of mangoes mango, you ship? Yeah. Who a lot of those? Uh, Indian stores take, uh, buy mango leaves. Really? Uh, for religious regions, uh, they use it for religious festivals. Wow. The banana leaf is used for serving food, actually. It's used as plates in India. So there, it's like, um, so we get orders for those. And then we'll ship, uh, uh, you know, some uh, uh, squashes, you know, we'll ship those. So those are all done on Mondays and Tuesdays. That's why on those days we want our guys to focus on the shipping part of it. Uh, we, uh, lychee time we shipped, uh, uh, we shipped all over the U.S. Uh, basically, um, you know, we'd, uh, we shipped in 10-pound boxes or 20-pound boxes. And we couldn't keep up with the demand for lychee. Do you have to do ship overnight or not necessarily? Absolutely. One thing I've learned with lychee is don't take any chances yeah. on lychee. So after a few trials and errors, you know, where we shipped like two day, three day, wasn't worth it because about 50% got damaged in the yeah. shipment. Um, and how long after you had the farm did you start to figure things out and... Uh get pretty organized here. It was tough the first two years because it was new to me because I didn't know much about trees. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of good people around to talk like you, for example. Thank you. <laughs> Watch your videos, you know, and uh, and also University of Florida puts out a lot of good information. And uh, Jonathan Crane has come here yeah. a couple oh, times. Okay, he has he. Uh, and he's given some, you know, suggestions on what to do. So they're helpful in that nature. And, and then as long as you can disseminate the information, uh, talking to various people, because no one single person is an expert. And how much time do you personally spend on the farm? 
When I'm here in town, uh, I'm pretty much full time here. Full time. Yeah, pretty much. And I'm I usually looking for problems. I'm not doing much physical work, yeah. but I'm looking for issues. I know you showed us uh, you, you, the taco guy, uh, but do, do you have a lot of other employees? Yeah, I have Nacho, and then uh, normally we'll employ two additional guys okay. full time. So, so on this big farm, just three three regular workers? Three regular workers. Occasionally we'll have one or two additional people. Uh, and then uh, during lychee time, we'll hire another five to six people uh, because that's harvesting has to be done fairly quick. Um, and then uh, uh, it depends on, depends on circa, but three full time and then, you know, uh, add on as we need them. So. Do you uh, grow mame here? We've tried growing mame here. We have one plant, but haven't been very successful. Mame is cold sensitive. So have you had any problems at all with uh, human animals, with people taking any fruit, or you've been good over that? We haven't had any uh, issue with people taking fruit. The only time we have some issues when, uh, oh, here. Um, when, uh, when we allow people, we don't allow anyone to you pick here, generally, for the most part. Occasionally, we'll, we'll give, you know, if there's nobody here, and then we just got one or two people, then we'll put them pick. But for the most part, we, we don't allow you pick. Uh, so, but what happens during lychee season, everybody wants to come, they want to take pictures, yeah, and occasionally you'll have some somebody go in and start picking fruit. We just have to remind them, hey, don't do it. Yeah. Uh, partly it's not because we don't want them to do it. There's a liability issue also for us. You know, on a big farm, we don't want people to get hurt. So this is what I found out talking to people um, that come to the farm, and they all. So I get Vietnamese, Jamaicans, Indians, Bangladeshis. Uh, with, you know, the Chinese people. One thing I found out was mangoes. You know, there is no single mango that's called best mango. You know? yeah. Everybody has their own little choice. Exactly. And I started to say, hey, you know, lemon meringue is good or curry is good. But then I found out, don't do that. <laughs> Let each people decide what they have. Yeah. So I found out the Vietnamese like Nam Dak Mai, uh, Bangladeshi's guy likes something different. <laughs> and then the Indian people want curry. Um, and we, uh, and you know, the the Jamaicans want uh, East Indian mango. Yeah. So then I found I said, okay, whatever mango, <laughs> everything is good. So this is our newest uh, property. It's a five acre property. Uh, so when you say the newest, did you just recently we just bought, bought this one? Oh, yeah. nice. It used to be Hanley's Nurseries. Uh, we we got it because it was strategically right next to us, um, and it was set up for a nursery. So, so how many acres is all everything you have here? Everything is thirty acres. Thirty acres, yeah. but this is the newest five this acres. The newest how new is this plot? Did you get? Uh, it? Maybe eight months. Eight oh months. wow! Yeah, eight or nine months. It was kind of a bad shape. They kept it bad, so we we started to clean up everything. And they left us a little warehouse, and there's offices here. We're trying to work on those a little bit. So right now, it, we got a lot of storage stuff here. You know. Um, it's, it's a place for us to store our equipment. Um, and this is where we're, so these are some of the trees that I told you we're selling. So these are your trees? These are all the trees. We can just get down real quick and show you a few of them. So these are all sapodillas that we just purchased. Are these for the ground or for people uh, to buy? People to buy, yeah. Everything is available for sale. And we did sell a few when, uh, when we were selling the lychee. Uh, we've kept a few on the other side for people to buy. If they wanted more, then we'd come there. All righty. Yeah. yeah. Merino. We, I tried to get Alano, but they're out of stock. And the, the latest one is the butterscotch. Yeah. Uh, I tried to get those, but those are high demand. So I'm, I've not tasted one, so I really can't tell. Yeah, they're people nice. People say it's pretty good. They're nice. Um, and then these are some curry leaf plants that we planted. Curry um, leaf. Yeah, watch your step, you know, there's a little bit of dirt there, so. And what's over there? And then more mangoes. Um, a lot of the other other varieties of plants that are not non-fruit trees, they were all grown over here. We just uh, the, took cuttings and then just planted them here. Yeah, these are all mangoes that we just got them recently. Malika mangoes, mostly mostly Indian varieties. Oh, uh, nice! And those are so non. They, yeah, those are some June plums that we bought. Some avocados that we bought. Some. Uh, what kind of avocados did you buy? 
you know, you ask me tough questions. Uh, <laughs> Remember, don't lose the label. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The... That's one thing, you know, that that is uh, something that, this is ha, ha avocado. Yeah, these are all haas. Um, okay. These are simmons. Simmons is excellent. Yeah, simmons is a big, big food, right? Simmons is good. Yeah, and then we got some more tamarind here and some Barbados cherries. So I think it looks like there are only a couple varieties in there. Haas and simmons looks like are the ones in there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some really special ones. I got these are these ones I didn't have. These Your are plums? the hog plums. Hog plum, yeah. So there are three different colors: yellow, uh, red, yellow, red, and uh, whatever. What orange? Yeah, some yellow, red, and what's the other one? Pink, red. All right, so yellow, red, and pink. Yeah. And so some guava you got guava as well. Yeah, some guavas, uh, Thai, Thai, Thai guava, I think. And then these are bananas that I don't know if you're familiar with. Uh, they told me they're, they're like dual. You get two, two, two. Uh, um, it's a double ma mahoe banana. Apparently, you'll get two flowers. Oh wow! So I want to try that out to see what what that's how that's going to come out. All right, Ravi. Thank you so much for showing us around. Uh, tell everybody uh, how they can contact you. Yeah, they can Wait, call yeah, us. Uh, you know, they can visit our website, nagagardens.com. Uh, they can also look at our social media, Facebook page, Naga Gardens, uh, or Instagram, Naga Gardens. Or they can call us at uh, our contact number, 402-650-1731. So Great. we're normally open on the weekends. Sometimes we're open, open on weekdays. Just have to check our website for hours. Um, Thanks, uh, Paul, for giving me a chance to show our garden to you. Thank to, you. To, and to your audience. Such a beautiful so, place. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Check them out. They have mangoes, super cheap for sale, and just jackfruit and just everything. So this is a place you want to definitely put on your list. Thank you, Ravi. Yeah, thank you. Wow, everybody. I am blown away. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That farm is definitely what I'm going to be visiting a lot. And if you're in the South Florida area, you should be visiting there also, especially if you're looking for some mangoes. What a great price they have them at. And they grow leeches and other things. Wow, what a nice guy. What a great farm. And I'll put all the contact information below. If you like this video and you want to see more like this, please just let me know in the comments. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you have a farm, whether it's a big 30-acre tropical fruit farm or a small little yard like myself with some fruit trees, I'd love to come and visit and film your yard and feature you on the show here as well. So just contact me at the my email address in the description and we can set that up. And remember to contact Ravi and get a chance. Go out to his farm and check his farm out. And uh, he has so many uh, amazing things there. So if you want to experience a real tropical fruit farm, that's a place I definitely recommend. All right, everybody, until then, have a great day and uh, keep growing.